Let's give ourselves infinite stamina and screw with our enemies by making them dance. Welcome to Game Hacking 204, the 200 series, where we cover everything you need to know to make your own game cheats by messing with game code using Cheat Engine. If you're new to the channel, I highly recommend you check out the previous videos in the series so you have everything you need to get the most out of this video. Also, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any future videos. But alright, let's get into it. We are picking up right where we left off in Game Hacking 203. In that video, we were attempting to give ourselves infinite stamina, but got tripped up with a new command we hadn't seen before. This MOV SS. But before we talk about what the deal is with this command, let's take a look at the XMM register in the code by selecting it and dragging up the register values. And you might notice something strange about the XMM2 register down here. It's not here, anywhere. And that's because XMM registers are very different on how they operate from these guys. But Cheat Engine still tracks all the XMM register values for us. And we can access them by clicking more information and then clicking this F here. And now we can see the XMM registers and their current values, which look a little different than these R registers over here. So I've got a whole nother video planned where we'll jump into the details on XMM registers, but right now the main point is that these are mainly used to handle the float and double value types that are listed in the Cheat Engine scan list. And I think it's time we take a deeper look at some of these value types because we really gotta nail this down before we get to some of the more advanced stuff. Okay, I've got the value types lined up across the top, and I've got the bytes separated with integers on the left and floating points on the right of this red bar. And if you're wondering, what the hell's a floating point? It's just another name for decimal numbers that have points in them, like 3.57, 81.9, or 0.2, as opposed to the integer value types in the left, which are whole numbers, like 3, 42, and 517,204. But I'll stick to calling these floating points, not decimal numbers, to avoid confusion when we need to talk about hex numbers as opposed to numbers in the decimal system, which include whole numbers and these fractional numbers. Okay, let's touch on a few more details about these value types. First up is size. Our byte here is the smallest of the bunch. It can only hold a single byte, which is a combination of two hexadecimal numbers, which remember are based on 16 digits and include letters A through F. Both of these hex numbers make up a full byte. Next up, we've got the two byte, which is named so because it holds two bytes, four hex numbers. Then the four byte, which holds four bytes, eight hex numbers. Noticing a pattern yet? Finally, the 8-byte, which as you might have guessed, holds 8 bytes, 16 hex numbers. And the float and double value types are the same size as the 4-byte and 8-byte value types, but they represent floating points instead of integers. Okay, next, let's touch on the value range for each value type, converted to decimal. I won't go into much detail here, except to say programmers can choose whether or not they want to include negative numbers in their programs, which they often do nowadays. So when you're assigning values to your addresses, be mindful of the value range for the type of your address so you don't put numbers in that are too small or big for that value type. Or you could end up with some really strange results. And as we've covered previously, hex numbers are used by default in game code. So these are the cheat engine prefixes to convert hex numbers to decimal numbers in scripts. The hashtag symbol or INT in parentheses can be used for integers of any size and you can use float in parentheses for floats and double in parentheses for doubles. And using these prefixes to have Cheat Engine do the conversions for us makes writing scripts a whole lot easier. All right, and finally, here are the size specific terms for the value types, with byte just being called a byte, two byte being called a word, four byte a double word or D word, and eight byte a quad word or Q word. And a quick point, the integers and floating points have the same name for their sizes. Okay, by now, you're probably wondering why the heck I'm telling you all this. Let's jump back into Cheat Engine and I'll show you. So we're back in the window with the XMM values, and I want to point out that the XMM2, which is the one used in the stamina code, has a value of 98, which matches my stamina in the game. So the XMM register is clearly updating stamina with a new total. And I'll generate a new code injection template so I can show you how to write a script where we can assign what we want the stamina to be. Okay, one thing we could do is come under the code that's updating stamina and just type in move, the address, float 500, and this avoids the need to do anything with the X in the register at all. It's still being allowed to update stamina, but now we're just going in right after it and updating the stamina with our value. And if I click assign a current cheat table, then activate the script, we can see stamina instantly becoming 500. 
And this is happening right away like this because, again, the game is constantly writing to stamina to update its value. Which is not a very efficient way to program a game, but it does make things easier for us. Anyway, I'll head back to the script because I want to show you how to actually use and manipulate the XMM register instead of just going around it. So I'll delete the instruction I just made, and let's take a look at this MOVSS command. It works a lot like the MOV command we've used before. But the SS is designed specifically to work with XMM registers, which have a whole set of commands that work just with them. And don't worry, I know this looks like a lot of stuff to worry about, but you'll rarely need to know more than like six of these, and we're only concerned with the MOV SS in this video. Okay, I'll come right under NewMem and type the MOV SS command, then the XMM register, put a comma, and then type in a float number. I'll just choose a thousand. But when I try to hit OK at the bottom, Cheat Engine throws up this warning again because this instruction isn't valid. And that's because you can't put a value directly into an XMM register like this. A value has to come from another XMM register or a memory address. And since I'm saving most of the details on XMM registers for another video, I'll show you how to create our very own memory address right in this script and assign it whatever value we want so we can then move that value into the XMM register. Not quite as convenient as just moving a value directly, but it's really not that much more work. So first, we need to come above new mem, and we need to reserve some memory for the address I want to make. Cheat Engine has a nifty command of its own to help us with that, the alloc command. And if you look at the top of the script, you can see that Cheat Engine has reserved some space for new mem, which is the start of the code the game executes when it comes through the memory that's been reserved for this script. So we can follow the pattern to allocate our own memory, which begins with the name. It can be whatever you want as long as you don't put any spaces. I'll call mine our underscore address, then a comma, and now we tell Cheat Engine how many bytes to reserve for us. Because I need the address to hold a float value, it only needs to be four bytes, so I'll type in four. And this last part tells Cheat Engine the general location and memory to reserve the four bytes for our address. I normally just copy and paste the location inside the alloc for new mem. This is entirely optional, but I recommend always filling it in to avoid an issue where Cheat Engine sometimes chooses a memory location that's too far away for our code to work correctly. Okay, the allocation's done. But every time we allocate memory, we gotta tell Cheat Engine to deallocate it when we turn the script off, so the memory gets freed back up. If not, we'll just keep eating up more and more memory every time we activate the script. So down here under disable, I'll just come under the dealloc new mem command, and I'll match the code for new mem, except I'll replace the word new mem with our underscore address. Okay, back to the top. Our address is all set with memory. Now we just need to assign it a value. Where you type this next part in really matters. It can't be anywhere between this new mem and this jump return here, or you'll definitely crash your game. I'll cover details on why this happens in a future video, but the point is, I recommend typing in new addresses we make above this new mem. So first, we type the name of the address, followed by a colon. Then, just under it, we need to declare a value for it. This always starts with a D, which is short for declare. And now, we need to specify the size of the value we want to add. And I'll bring back the value type cheat sheet, where we have all the names Cheat Engine has chosen to go with for the value types. And the way this works is we just need to type the first letter of the name for the value size we want to use. So if we look under float, it's a D word. So we'll go with D back in the script. Now we just put a space and then type in float in parentheses to tell Cheat Engine to convert this for us. And finally, I can type in a thousand. And here it is. We've now created our address and assigned a value to it. Now I can replace the thousand with our address, which needs to be in brackets since it's an address. And this code will copy the 1000 that we assigned to our address into XMM2, which will then copy it into our stamina down here in original code. And if I click OK, no warning messages pop up. And when I activate the script, stamina gets updated to 1000 right away. So I'll swing my sword a few times, and you might notice stamina changing briefly. But this is just a graphical thing. I can swing my sword forever without any issues. But so can the enemies, because this is another shared code. This might not bother you as long as you have infinite stamina. But this shared code provides an opportunity to screw with the enemies a bit. So I think I'll write a script that'll keep my stamina infinite, but place zero into the enemy's stamina so they can't do anything. And I'll start this off the same way as before. By deactivating the script, then go into the disassembler, right-clicking on the code and choosing find out what addresses this instruction accesses. And because this code is constantly updating stamina, we can stay safely away from the enemies and still get their stamina addresses loaded here along with ours. So we can tell by the 98 here that this is our stamina. So I'll right-click and mark it as group one. 
Then I'll pick three of these others kind of at random, but I'll make sure to choose at least one with a value of 100 and one with a value of 130 to capture different kinds of enemies for a better compare. And now I'll right click and go to scan for commonalities, which will bring up this preview window for the registers. This time though, there's not much to go by, so we'll actually need to do a scan and look through a structure to find what we need. Any of these could work, but I'll double click RCX since that's being used in the original code. And a new window pops up, allowing us to change a few of the scan settings. I'll just change this max level to zero, which will give us more stable results, and then click scan. And I'll choose a location, then I'll click save. And then the scan results get loaded here. Now, before you freak out, this window is just showing us a list of addresses with values that are related to us and the enemies in some way. Group one is in blue, which I assign to the player, us, and group two has the three columns in red, which I assign to the enemies. By default, this window displays things as 4 byte integers, but if we click the drop down and choose float, you'll see that our stamina and the stamina of our enemies is right here at offset 0. Which makes sense because the original code is placing stamina into the memory address at RCX. If there was a hex number being added to it, like say B4, then the value of XMM2 would be getting copied into the address located at offset B4. If this isn't quite clicking for you, don't worry, we'll come back and touch on this again in the future. But right now, the only thing we really care about is finding a value in one of these addresses that matches in all three red columns for the enemies, but is different for the player, which is easier for me to find when the display is set to 4 byte. So almost right away, here in offset 78, I see a 1 for the player and 0 for the enemies. That's exactly what I need, so I'll use this offset and I'll click on the table extras button to bring up the cheat engine comments window and I'm typing in the register and offset with the player value on the left and enemies on the right and okay let's head to the script and get our code typed and same as last time we we'll use CMP and JNE as a combo to separate things out first CMP then I'll type the address at RCX plus 78 and I'll type 1 since that's the value for the player then below it JNE and original code and again, since RCX plus 78 is holding 1 for the player, but not for the enemies, we'll be allowed to pass through the JNE to any code below it, but the enemies will be sent straight to original code without going through the new code we just typed here. So this will give me infinite stamina while the enemies would decrease normally. But to screw with the enemies a bit more, I'll come just below the original code stamina instruction and move 0 into stamina. But I'm not quite done yet, because if I click OK and activate the script right now, you can see my stamina is 0 too. And if I go back to the script, this is happening because right now I'm putting 1000 in up here. But then I'm still traveling down here to original code where 0 is being put into my stamina, just like the enemies. So I'll need to use another command so that my stamina will skip over original code so it's not being updated to 0. The command is JMP, which is short for jump. It's kind of like the JNE, except there's no condition. It will make everything coming to it always jump to the destination enter. So for the destination, I'll type exit so now my stamina will never hit original code. And one last thing to do to finish things up. Right now, nothing is writing to my stamina because by skipping over original code, I'm also skipping over the stamina instruction. So we're putting a thousand into XMM2, but XMM2 isn't updating my stamina. So I'll go down to original code, then copy the stamina code, and paste it just above the JMP exit code. So quick recap. Player stamina and enemy stamina will be compared for one in the memory address pointed to at RCX plus 78. Enemy stamina is zero at this address, so they should all be kicked down to original code where zero will be placed into their stamina. But my stamina should be able to come right down here where the address we created will place 1000 into XMM2, which will then put it into my stamina. Then this JMP to exit will take us safely over original code where we'll miss moving zero into the stamina. Let's test this. I'll click OK and activate the script. And my stamina is a thousand. Let's go find some enemies. And they're not attacking because they have no stamina. But I do. Okay, this is fun and all, but it doesn't work on bosses that can still attack and hit really freaking hard. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video where we'll become literal gods with infinite health and one hit kills on everything, including the bosses.
Thanks for watching. See you next time.